Alright guys, welcome to episode 117 of the Flat Earth Fever Formula 1 podcast. And uh, as you can probably tell, we are not where we usually are. We're at a park. We're Paul, at a park. Paul Quarrington Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Downtown Toronto. Over there. That's right on the Lake, Lake Ontario. The, Lake Ontario. the Toronto <laughs> Islands are somewhere over there. You the can't people see can't, it. People can't see it. Yeah, it's They're overexposed. starting to resurface. <laughs> They're starting to re- resurface from the flood. The yeah. floods. The right great flood of 2017. Hey, what? Hey, so Hungarian the Grand Hungarian Grand Prix was today. So, we, yeah, we just watched that, didn't we? Thoughts, Thoughts. permutations, salutations. <laughs> there was so, so boring. So apparently, a guy, some guy out there, uh, you know how like the these betting services that were super popular in England. Um, oh yeah. Some dude apparently made like I don't know, like fifteen, sixteen. I don't know. Like let's call it two thousand pounds or whatever um, on a bet that like on like almost like a joke bet that he put. On Alonso getting the fastest lap of the race, <gasps> like and it no was way. it was the, uh, the odds were fifty to one. So like <laughs> oh <laughs> he put a th- he put twenty bucks down and got like two grand. Like hey <laughs> hey, I bet that guy's like Amazing. buying everybody drinks today tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so McLaren incredible. did though. They, yes, they, sh- they showed up. How crazy was that, man? And to top yeah. it off, top it off, uh, Alonso then at the end of the race. Lying on the like he, it's 2017, man. When memes become reality, <laughs> that meme became reality. When, when memes become dreams, yeah. they overnight painted a mural on the floor where the cars park after the race. Yeah, and got a wooden chair for Alonso to sit on and relax. I'd like to like hear this birthday. story. For yes, that's birthday. true. That's true. He's 36. He's 36 years old. Yeah. 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 yeah yesterday. Hey, but but okay, so. The Formula One, whatever, what, what, what do they call it in that language? Magyar Nadij or whatever. The the Hungarian Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Honestly, I think we had been to because I I always have I have good f- fond memories of the Hungarian Grand Prix from last like few years, right? Well, as as long as we've been watching it like religiously together, like it's been always pretty exciting. Yeah. But in its entire history. It's not one of the most exciting tracks, like regularly. You know, like it has yeah. for most of its history. It's uh, it's a, it doesn't have a lot of over- overtaking opportunities, as Plus, we saw. They've, yeah. they've softened it up to a bunch in the last few years. You know, they repaved a bit of it a couple of years ago, and then all the all the runoffs are paved now, basically. Yeah, I mean, they weren't a few years ago. It's a little soft. They repaved a few parts and changed it slightly, but you know. That's just part of like renewing a track, though. Mm. You know what I mean? Like people mourn. Oh, there used to be a bump there that hurt everybody's spine that went over it, but it's not. It's, it's not the same track anymore. It's the, pretty much that kind of stuff. But yeah, they did pay look, pretty much all the tracks. They paved over all the sand and grass. The main difference. What do you think about it, Mike? I thought it was really boring. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was like the least one of the. There was another race this season that was a little less boring the last race or more yeah yeah what, right? was, it? what was the that? british grand prix wasn't that great yeah <laughs> well, it's just nothing really exciting well i mean besides <laughs> besides um for Stappen taking out uh my boy ricardo yeah and the, what second supposedly turn? his own boy too yeah his own boy his own wow. boy no no i think i think that their relationship is like like, come on, Ricardo was not happy about that. Remember they were so frolicking around in Lederhosen together <laughs> <laughs> a mere few weeks ago. That was all for show. They oh. fucking hate each other. Now, I, bet. <laughs> I didn't, It's weird that, you know, when we first got into it, like, oh, you know, 18-year-old, 17-year-old Max Verstappen. We give him, like, so much credit, uh, you know, driving the way he did, which was just, like, always hyper-aggressive. Right. And now it's just, now it's become like his mo yeah, right it's like his, his, his whole meme yeah he, and that's what he does and then he just bullies his way in, into into positions and sometimes it works and then sometimes you take out your teammate 
So, <laughs> and, that, and that's the truth of it. Or then you take yeah. someone else out, and eventually it's going to get to a point where like everyone on the grid to, like just doesn't want to drive with this kid. So what if what if yeah, the the point true. was that Jos Verstappen in his years in Formula One, not being the like the most talented driver or whatever, maybe he figured out that listen, the secret to this sport, the way it's the way it's done right now is just to breed the ultimate version of myself well like or, or uh, just <laughs> pure pure youthful impetus like no not caring about anything else just pure like ego mm. youthful like like react like you know just think like do first before you think whatever kind right. of mentality and he then he went and raised his son that way and now like that's the max first step that we have um, I, he doesn't I guess he doesn't come across as this like too much but one thing that I've heard is that like just day to day like he just has like not the greatest attitude of them all like he like he just comes across as like you know kind of a dick kind of when like a when he first came in he was like that on TV in every interview and then I guess slowly he's learned to kind of not act that way on TV but I guess if the rumors you're talking about are true mm. he's a dick when he's not acting on TV. Hey, but I get it. Come on, like that kind of stuff. Get, like, yeah, he's 18, 19 though? years old. No, well, I only get it because. Yeah, come on, man. You remember being 18 or 19? Exactly, yeah. Uh, that's why. Okay, like, all right. Get all the right. fuck out of my way. Yeah. Well, or, I wasn't like that. I was just. Not, well, not even. I'm not even talking about driving, just right. life, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, no, no, especially that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Nothing like that. But that's just <laughs> me. I mean, well, you know, you look at Alonzo at that age, or you look at you apparently know, Hamilton Al- that, that, at that age. That is one thing. Apparently, he Alonso apparently when he came to F one was very much like a lot of people are like he, they're like oh uh, these are paddock people say Alonso had a very or Verstappen had a, has a very similar mentality to what Alonso was like. I guess what I, we'll see, we'll see in the years to come. Mm-hmm. But I guess I think it really is just like how people are you just you learn you learn respect as you get a bit older and older sure and then uh you realize yeah you know. i mean do you earn re- respect by bullying people through the grid no on well the first but you know the, what's gonna happen no. though is he's gonna be by the time he's like 28 29 like he's maturing like becoming like a like a full man whatever yeah, yeah. then there's gonna be you know the guys who are like 12 years old now coming in and trying to push his ass off the road yeah, yeah. and be like i remember watching you when i was a kid right yeah, yeah. There's some young kid that's watching him as a super fan. He's gonna grow up, race him in the next six, seven years. You know. So I think what you're saying is that in the next ten to twelve years, fifteen years, we're gonna see a very aggressive-looking grid of just like Max <laughs> and Max Verstappen inspired. Oh my god! School of thought and oh, oh god. it's gonna be dirty, man. And, well, and at Russia, that point, there's going to be magic oh, items. And Russian I, rockets. I didn't even thought of that angle. That there's kids growing up right now that are looking up to Max Verstappen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. There's so many of them. <laughs> look, real thing. look how many orange t-shirts <laughs> there are. So, I was hanging out with a bunch of Dutch people earlier. Or no. You would. Yes. <laughs> No, no, that's uh, from the Netherlands. A bunch of Danish, Danish, people. Danish people. Earlier, from <laughs> Denmark. They, they got upset about. Yeah, it. So them. sorry, Dutch people. <laughs> if I, um, no, no. So there were, there were these uh, Danish guys that I like met at Betty's before mm-hmm. you guys showed up, uh, and we were talking about Formula One, right? And like they brought, like they're all super, super, super excited about uh, the possibility of that race in uh, downtown in, in Copenhagen. Downtown in Copenhagen. Yeah. The, crisscross race with two bridges but they, they they also like feel like and these are like you know these are grown-ass men like probably our age right mm. um they like they felt it they were like yeah fucking verstappen like yeah, yeah. They, like they like magnuson and they love the fact that magnuson said suck my balls on tv <laughs> <laughs> he's saying a bunch of that too he said in the the driver's uh, press conference on on thursday this week too they were talking they asked all eight of them yeah that who participated about the halo he was the last with the last word basically and they ended the the press conference 10 minutes early because he said something like you know if you're buying your regular sedan compared to a ferrari on the, as a streetcar for example whatever you know if it looks like shit it's shit it's <laughs> like he's like and, and on top of that he was all, before that he made the point that he, he wasn't about like the safety aspect either he's like mm. i came here to race up one cars with the open open helmet whatever yeah Open, open cockpit. Full open cockpit. 
But uh, I don't know. I, I agree with him. But Listen, it doesn't matter. Did I doesn't say it anymore. or did I say it? I told, I, t I said it on this very show weeks and weeks ago that the FIA was going to try to do something to be stupid about it you don't you, you guys don't know like they so then the vote in the f1 strategy group meeting was nine out of ten votes voted against it and still the fia pushed that regulation through because they can that's right. the power that they have under the guise of safety and they safety. can push through Anything. any fucking thing they want i even said last week though i, I was predicting and that vettel going out with that uh glass shield the yeah. the, the glass what it, that's the shield right yeah the, the well, glass whatever. window um he did like one lap i thought that one lap was just like a kind of thing to slowly wean us off the idea of any kind of head protection right like they're trying something else he said it made him dizzy he threw up and stuff this is a bad idea boom two days later it's a negotiation tactic yeah it's a negotiation tactic the the fia yeah. corrupt as yeah. they are yeah corrupt as they are there is oh, for sure this is some sort of power play that they have i like and just going back to what i was talking about like i was saying sooner rather than later probably or at some point Liberty Media is going to find out that one of their biggest problems, yes, they got Bernie out of the way, but now they have like another huge obstacle in the way if they really want to turn the sport around, and it's the FIA. FIA. <laughs> it's the FIA. And in, in Canada, when the, the three wise men sat on the thing for 40 minutes up on the, up on the press conference and said, yeah, we love the FIA. We think we got a good like direct line of con contact. We... We took out some of the middlemen or whatever. Like we, we want to work directly with them face to face, shake hands, and then boom. Yeah. They throw the. the I think maybe, maybe the FIA is like super on board with Formula E going forward. Super conspiracy. Who knows? But like who knows? so, the 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 thing that they keep bringing up over and over and over and over again is um, the liability aspect, right? So um, because now they're like yeah. in some sort of well, they're in a trial with Jules Bianchi family. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're like yeah, they say like, like oh, oh they're afraid that like if they don't do something and they have to do something but if they don't do something then um, then they're gonna get sued for more but listen that's that argument is so thin mm. because the FIAA spends millions and millions and millions of dollars millions upon millions heaps of millions of dollars every year yeah on unnecessary shit doesn't need to be had that doesn't need to be spent like flying Jean Todd around the world on a private plane why does he need to have a private plane why does the FIA a, 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 an institution that is supposed to be not for profit have to have a private plane why wouldn't you just like you know fly everybody commercially and if furthermore mm. furthermore explain to me how any part of the job that they do cannot be done remotely yeah. like except for like they know the internet exists you right? know yeah except for like a handful of key positions that yeah. you do need at the, at the track like scrutineering and whatever whenever you actually need humans on board to touch and shit yeah the stuff unless you have that everything else you can do via email teleconference whatever listen the point is is a highly highly corrupt organization highly inefficient and they are holding the sport back some of the money that they now that they're, they're pushing it back yeah this halo shit they're pushing it back and they want to keep their I'm lifestyle obviously i mean and like who can blame them they have like one of like the highest pieces of like real estate in downtown paris mm -hmm. the place de la concorde and like they're all like dignitaries and they like they jean todd he thinks he's some like high-ranking politician like that he, his this is a stepping stone for him to like get to to get to the un and he wants he doesn't want to get sued he's a, this this is even before he joined the fia jean todd had been like renowned for being like very very adverse to getting sued it, the, the the years that he uh, before the FIA before he, before he was president of the, FIA, of the FIA he ran Ferrari he was the team principal of Ferrari and he was apparently notorious for just like just just being like just, you know the politician whatever guy. but uh, yeah yeah very very like yeah it's, he will go secretly doing whatever it took to do yeah whatever it took to do whatever he wanted yeah so listen this is just <laughs> this is still part of the old mentality like and thank goodness that got the sport 
through the 70s and 60s and we are all very appreciative of the work that Jean Todd and Bernie Eccleston did like let's not be mistaken otherwise we wouldn't have F1 right now but that kind of a, just let's just retire that mm. come on like, but like also into road cars too like it trickled down like safety belts a, a lot of stuff that's it that's in from racing true came, came down to, to street cars and and there is a there is a and, and the FIA separately from racing mm-hmm. just safety standard but and no there, there is a valuable thing like you know with, with safety right like the like, cars don't if we can save some lives by like making small changes then of course I'm all for it and and you know like none of the drivers are my brothers or nephews or whatever so right. you know maybe I can't I don't have the authority to say that what like whatever happens with their lives but people we need to be realistic and like we need to like understand like that there's more to social justice for the human condition like there there is an aspect of us intrinsically of each and every one of us that knows that if nobody was in risk of getting hurt in formula one it would be just as thrilling to watch the robot race you know what i mean like if nobody yeah. if there was absolutely no possibility of any of them getting hurt it wouldn't be worth to watch like it just wouldn't yeah. be worth watching yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're doing, we we, we want to see what we want to see with every sport is humans pushing themselves to the very limit of human capacity. Yeah. All the way back to the gladiators. Yeah. All the way back. They people, should. People want. They blood. should have, yeah. you know, like on every circuit, one corner where a tiger pops out of the floor, <laughs> <laughs> like in the Colosseum, all, going all the way back to Rome, mm. and pull out the original tactics. Or come something. On, come I'm, on, guys. Yeah, Underground tiger cages. I, I, I should, actually, I, well, if, if we're just like going to spew <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> idea, I like your ridiculous ideas of like just actually instituting some sort of ridiculous. This is your ridiculous yet achievable somehow. <laughs> is instituting some sort of like power up system, kind of like with Mario Kart, <laughs> where like where if you like hit like this specific patch of of of, of tarmac with like a specific transponder or something, then like this roulette happens like. <laughs> yeah. You could press a button to choose one exactly yeah. like Mario Kart, yeah. or yeah. just let it like time out like a like a whatever it's called, like, like a slot like machine. Like a slot machine. Yeah, yeah. and then like you the can one get, I'm bandit. Then you can get like maybe like anything from like I guess like the worst that could happen to yourself, maybe like a five second pit stop penalty, or oh, you or, can't call that case. or or you can like five second pit stop somebody else. <laughs> should, maybe like a five second like. 10 percent horsepower reduction or oh yeah oh yeah like hey, there you go something like that <laughs> or like you get to burn 100 milliliters of oil <laughs> I, regret, I regret saying that <laughs> so much now because what happens to the sport right? what it, like yeah, if you get a mushroom you can see it through the next three corners <laughs> Don't. but you know it's funny like the one idea that we did have which i thought was really interesting was taking away the communications between the drivers and their teams like for a short amount of time, like say like ten oh, minutes or like something just like that. Like, like, like what Lewis yeah. had today, but yeah, exactly. as a power down. Yeah, as a power <laughs> down. <laughs> and it's an accidental voodoo voodoo trap. You can <laughs> act off that roulette wheel. That and this is we're laughing right now, but this is something they really could implement and I'd be into it. Sure. Yeah. No, if they, I'd be, if they, no, if they listen, really listen, thought it out, listen, if they really thought it out to F one level, it's not. And there's it's, like that's, something that may be considered unsportmanlike, but I'd still be willing to like. <laughs> have him try it out yeah. see what happens not necessarily on the sunday but why not on and friday testing day? well yeah why not on friday well, i think <laughs> i think one of the biggest one of the biggest problems is that you know like this race and the race before it just wasn't very exciting yeah but right, right? And, and that's why we talk about things like this yeah. because we want to make it always exciting right because okay. it, it's not like an everyday thing right it's you know there's a race either once a week once every two weeks or, or whatever it is, right? And sure. then when you wait for it and it's fucking boring, you're like, well, okay, well, I guess that was a thing. So now now we have to wait a month for the next race. Yeah. So and my, my point is that, like, we want it always to be exciting. Right. Yes. I mean, not every soccer match, not every hockey game, basketball game is always exciting. But there's True. more of them. Yes. Right? And that's sort of like, eh. I only wasted like a you know a night with my bo- with my buddies drinking uh, ah shitty hockey game whatever there's another one tomorrow or yeah. the day after that or whatever the case is but when it comes to Formula One right you know it's the spectacle but when the spectacle's like you know 
instead of fireworks, it's like a water pistol. You know what I mean? It's yeah. you, uh, you almost feel robbed a bit, right? True. On, on a scale too, though, like think, how long is a hockey game? It's two. It's like two hours, over maybe? two hours yeah. or something. It's way longer than the F1 race. Yeah. You know what I mean? The yeah. F1 race, like there's gonna be action definitely at the start, mm -hmm. probably in the middle somewhere when the pit scramble all happens, and then at the end, hopefully somebody pulls something out and the end might break up again. So, you know, you have that. But really, this season though, there's been two and a half kind of crappy races maybe yeah. like yeah. half a Russia and then yeah. this race and maybe it's the like, last one I, I think new even, F even new this F1 race wasn't fans. that bad man look at it but look at, like when you really look at it I, I don't know it was awesome uh, uh, the McLaren popping up where they did yes Alonso no, th yeah. there, were, there were exciting things that happened as a result of the race finishing not Hamilton as being super cool yeah, yeah. No, that's true no, I, I won't deny there, there were cool aspects to it but like during the race like to me, to me, not really. No, no, for sure. And like, but but I think we've been spoiled too because we've had yeah, a lot of uh, like high action point. races. And like, yeah. I think it might not serve the sport like the best if all the excitement that there was to be had during this year is all behind us. Mm. <laughs> like there is, but there is a real possibility that there's not going to be any more like super exciting races for the rest of the year. Which but is still, but that's you the can't sport. even say that. I mean, it's a halfway exactly. of the season. What do you, what no. do you even okay, suggest? Okay, but no, but what I'm suggesting is that I remember the days back in the day when Vettel was winning everything in his Red Bull, right? Where like the sport was kind of a procession and and even before that even before that like when Michael Schumacher in like the early 2000s was winning everything in, a, in the Ferrari like there were moments of the sport where like most people would categorize most races as boring in the entire year absolutely and there's still but, there's still I'm, but I, that's not to say that I don't agree with Martin Brundle when he says that even then even in the most boring races ever and like he's even said it like even like oh he's like oh that was a kind of a boring race to commentate on there was still like, there's still something to love there's still something to like understand about the, the rest sport though. yeah well look, look, well look at this they they sold to themselves the first uh the first section of the pit straight uh whatever you call it the grandstand and they put a huge banner over it right they could the battle only of be the five one. there can only be one and they have the five top drivers yeah. all there no max for step but the, the, the five top drivers there the hashtag f1 <clears throat> They're trying to push that, yeah, there really can be, like, five drivers. Mm -hmm. And Max took out Ricciardo today, so he bumped himself up a little bit. They, they're probably close to even. Do we know? Can we... Well, I'll, yeah. I'll okay. try to look that up quickly. Yeah, okay. Look, at, look it up. And while you look it up, like... Look I'll, it up in a, I'll, I'll, I'll continue sort of with what you're saying. Okay, listen. I do agree with you, though, Mike. There, the, Like, there is a need to make the sport more commercially, like... like like wide spectrum like friendly but because some of those changes that need to happen for that to actually become a thing are like almost like radical changes with the sport mm -hmm. this is this is stuff that's gonna take years right right like but i i think i think there is a, a guy the sport here. will never be what it used to be not uh, not in terms of popularity but in terms of how people enjoyed the sport it's just not going to it will never be that well, we glory. Don't, hey, that it listen, we don't. It know. could be. We I could be yet. wrong, but we I don't doubt know yet. It. We don't know I, yet. We don't know. We don't know. What, I believe in liberty. Doing yeah, whatever we don't know they what liberty. Can, is but there good. are so many newer things coming out that people are more excited about than than generally formula. I'm not saying it's not popular or going to be more popular than it is now. What I'm saying is that like other things are newer and fresher, and that's just how I see it. I love the sport. I think it's like really incredible to watch, but. What are the kids watching? You know, most kids, they're not watching Formula One. Not you know what yet. They're, they're not, not yet. They're not. But you know what they are watching? They're watching League of Legends streams on, on Twitch. Some of them are. Oh, fucking a lot of them are, man. Sure. Dude, but we have, there's but we have, there's two, are there bars? two guys older than me that, like, watch, um, what's that game? Dota or whatever. Dota, yeah. They watch that shit on lunch break and don't talk to anybody. <laughs> they're like... Oh my God! This guy with blah 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 on Dota today. I'm not saying that vi the video He's that like Twitch streaming is not is not popular. Like that is obviously higher, like like far from the truth. No, no I'm doing. I'm still doing this podcast. I, I love Formula. Formula no, 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 anyway. no. Oh, that's what I'm. I'm not. It's just. It's about exactly what Sean Bratches has been talking about. It's about 
activating the fans. Oh, activating. Activating, the fans. activating like the niche fans. Like the, the the way that Formula One is gonna move forward is uh, if instead of approaching uh, the problem nation by nation, as in like how do we get the Formula One to be more popular in the States? How do we get Formula One to be more popular in China? How do we get Formula One to be more popular in Canada? Throw that out the window, that mentality, Mm -hmm. and say, how do we make... Start from the top. Yeah, how do we make Formula One more popular in the world? Right. (laughs) Right. Well, if only there was, like, some sort of organization that had all the footage, (laughs) had all the technology, (laughs) people and resources in order to teach and encourage people to get into Formula One. I mean, it would be so, so easy. The biggest problem problem with Formula One, and I fucking... Last week when we watched the race, my buddy Marcus came by. Yeah. And, and, two weeks uh, ago. His, yeah. Two weeks ago, sorry. And his roommate. And I was explaining them the sport while yeah. we were watching it. And you know, what the thing, you know what they fucking told me? I had no idea this is how the sport worked. That's the biggest problem Formula One yeah. has. They don't... They, all they know is it's Ferrari, fast cars that go around in... in not circles, but go around on track. And it, they go around in not circles. That's and, what and everyone not, knows. In not circles. That's how people yeah. say it. They, so they, they like race like not circles, right? That, <laughs> this mysterious organization that I'm talking about needs to be able to... <laughs> if you want to get the, the general fans. Of course. You, you fucking you need no, them. No, no. You, don't, you, you don't, need them. You don't even need the general fans. You just need the niche fans. But niche fans around the world amount to a lot. Right. But I mean, then they're not niche fans. They're right. They're hyper- part of a community. They, that, they are a the global community. Right. The niche, fa- like niche, is like the wrong word. Like the but yeah, perhaps. Fans, right. The 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 the, the super the, hyper fans the, that are so really into the it. The society of F1. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> like <laughs> the people who are into Formula One are really into Formula One. True. I'm into hockey, but not the same way I'm into hockey like you were into Formula One. Fair, right? But but, but that, it's easier for me just to watch a game of hockey, know what the fuck's going on, and like dip, right? And then True. come back like and next come, week and, and like see what the, happened the in next between. Two days, I'm like, oh, they're playing these guys. Cool, neat. What it, doesn't matter. I can still get it, right? True. When I when they watched the race, right, two weeks ago, yeah, they're like, okay, now what? Now uh, hmm, what happens? What happens next? What? How did the, how does the well, see? I look work? at it the other way. I think one of the reasons I got into F one is because when when I first started watching, there's like 16 times a year only that they that right. they race. It's like I told you, I used to like get the the TV guide in the sun, the Sunday newspaper yeah. and then just go through and see what time the race was on, and then I'd set my VCR for six hours. You put yeah. it put it on low quality on the VHS tape, and I just record like six like an hour before and an hour after or whatever the the broadcast was. Yeah. And hopefully I well, caught in that in that I that's like a like really show or that's whatever a great story too right because like you got into something really cool on your own didn't need well, anyone that's else a, how but stupid that's... obscure it's always been like stupid obscure and like yeah. even up into the 90s they used to count the laps backwards like if it was like today with like um, the hungry race is 70 laps it would start mm-hmm. at lap 70 mm-hmm. and finish on lap zero yeah <laughs> it's like well, lap one is the last lap and it ends at zero. They counted down. The people would be like, try to, like anyone, like imagine trying to be a new fan. Yeah. Then you're like, yeah. oh, 25 out of 70 laps. Like no, no, no. There's only 25 left. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, it counts down. In this, in this, in this kind of racing, it goes down. To to backpedal on some of the things I was saying, I think I need it's to not- I need to understand the sport more and in this and just say like. Yeah, motherfucker. Sometimes races aren't going to be exciting. Yeah, and that's just that's part of the natural ebb and flow of the sport, which I still am trying to understand and get into, right? Because again, there's only so many races. Some are going to be great. Some are going to be okay, and some are going to be shit. Imagine in the next two years, though, if they get a bunch of major cities in the world to mm-hmm. open up their downtown areas yeah. mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks to make a festival then, out of this. Then and even if the race all, is bring not in more manufacturers, bring in two or three more engine manufacturers yeah. and th- maybe three more teams or four yeah. more teams. Well, at that's, that point, what at that really point here's, what, here's, what, here's what would happen. And you know, you know why this it might work. go back into the seventies stuff where even all the teams don't show up to all the races. If they go up to 25 exactly. and or and even if they have, they could have uh, 15 teams on the grid, honestly, like, like within a couple of years, if, mm-hmm. if it, if Liberty does their job right, yeah. they could have we could have thirty cars on the thirty cars on the grid, and <laughs> and 20, 25 races. Yeah. And no, but listen, here's what would happen. So, so then, 
if there's that many engines, it would make yeah. it easier for a startup team to even build a car and buy mm. a cheaper engine. And if you, you don't have, have to, like you don't have to buy the twenty-five million dollar Ferrari contract for a season. And a lot, of pe- a lot of people don't like the idea of like, oh, like everybody complains like, oh my god, another like street race <laughs> or whatever, another street race in a city. I actually, I think that like a lot of those people like, I don't know, like I don't know if like they actually like really feel that way or they just heard that somewhere and like are repeating know, that opinion because I, I hear it a lot and like it's always the same opinion oh I don't know about these street races like the tight corners they don't work listen Baku this year was like pretty good and there's and what what is what is the one race that every F1 driver says that you absolutely must do and every F1 pundit says that you must absolutely must go to it's Monaco, Monaco. it's a street race yeah. listen Singapore is exciting as hell sometimes like there are good and bad things about about We're street races. We were this at, at Betty's earlier, yeah. and with this, we we asked this to Max Verstappen, yeah. uh, Max Chilton, yeah. when uh, he was at, at the Honda Indy here. The Toronto track is Indy is not the level of F1, and he's like, man, I was like hurting my hurting my back, hurting my teeth driving over this Toronto track. But he's like, when you drive the F1 circuits like Monaco, or whatever, it's like glass, and like remember. Yeah. Baku spent whatever it was like twenty or I'm 80, 80, million, everything, 80 yeah. million euro repaving most of the the city the city sections that the the, the track went through, and so did Singapore, and yeah. so will any circuit that coming up that's gonna that's gonna they're, do it. Marcos like that. They can they do race it right. Either too. They can do. They can, we can do like there's a way to do street circuits right, and if we have to lose the British Grand Prix of Silverstone and gain London as a street London. race and, and if we're going to have London, a street man, race in the London. downtown of Copenhagen mm. like those uh, a race Danish the people fog. Like, imagine listen, if it's a foggy day in London it would be fucking insane and here's the other bonus to it <laughs> even even if one of those very like interestingly like one of these races that are that are located in an interesting place mm. in the world even if the race if if we like happen to have a race that's not that interesting it would at least be interesting to look at right. come on yeah like you know Absolutely. what i mean Absolutely. it would still i would at least like like feel like what you say mm. that you're not just wasting your two hours on a sunday right. the copenhagen the circuit does nothing look, at doesn't least you'll bad. you'll have yeah. stuff to look at mm-hmm. listen there's nothing like we have to give these guys and we have to give like the people that are coming up with these new ideas about street tracks a chance we simply do not know how the copenhagen track is going to turn out we do the not copenhagen know copenhagen track is for full disclosure uh turkey approved <laughs> it is <laughs> that's a fact and as far as far as london like i don't know pe- people will get mad but silverstone is badass it's been there for a long time yeah but London's Lon- like it's London not it's London. not London is London, like Silverstone is an airport in a field. <laughs> as far as you can see, is grass. It's just uh, like whatever vegetables and stuff. It's yeah, farmland. So as far as the um, wait no, for, let's go back to the race because in one of the biggest stories of the race is swapping. Th- oh yeah, that was cool. Just quickly because we, we I was looking up we, I looked this up, the the the. the conspiracy theory of uh, Verstappen taking out Ricardo for Ooh. revenge or whatever okay. is, is bullshit because Ricardo still has 117 points to Verstappen 67 so 50 point gap is huge and Ricardo's actually over Raikkonen by one point Raikkonen's Ooh. at 116 Shit. and right now so to round out the top like 5-6 uh, Vettel's at 202 Hamilton 188 so 14 14 back and Bottas is at 169 169 and then it's Ricardo that's 13 squared and then Ricardo <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, and then yeah then Ricardo 117 Reikin in 116 Verstappen 67 that's where a huge fall off and then Force India 4th India is 7th uh, and 8th right now 56 and 45 hmm. while we're on that Mercedes constructors Mercedes in 1st 357 Ferrari 318 Red Bull 184 fourth india still fourth india 104 and then williams way back 41 points and then it falls back from there toro ross is actually right behind mclaren after today's performance beat sauber oh good for them yeah they were below sauber before because more than double uh, where line got that got the points right like Mm -hmm. that one race and like then mclaren was the last team now sauber is back to being the last team look at this gap though between five and six 
Oh. Toro Rosso and Williams, two point gap right now. Oh shit. Forty one to thirty nine Toro Rosso. That's but that's not McLaren good. McLaren was fighting at Toro Rosso levels today. And that's like honestly, like that that's gotta be like one of like the biggest stories. Okay, hang on, before we get to that, um the swapping. Here's my I think, I think here's the, you know, here's my take. I think on the it. Tor and Toro stands for torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I the think, red I torpedo. Think, I think it was they were they've been planning this for years. <laughs> it's all an elaborate ruse. Fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, but now seriously. Yeah. Or even like a half a point more seriously. Uh, <laughs> we had a race that was defined. Like the the the, the most comments of the race came. Out of that last overtake at the end, you know, oh, Lewis Hamilton is so honorable to give that that position back. So let's talk. Let's talk about that for a second, because there were there were actually two, right? Like two swaps mm. that happened during the race. That's true. Yeah, it was the Mercedes on the Mercedes camp and the Ferrari mm. camp. The two top teams swapped their drivers, and I think I think that towards the end of the race, the British commentators were scrambling around with like a, a sort of a dichotomy that they had to like really like try to wrestle with because on the one hand they were trying to say that um lewis letting uh botas pass was like so good and like the right thing to do and like the righteous thing to do as well but at this with the, at the same breath they were still trying to say that reckoning letting Vettel pass was not great or not anything it's just uh, it was the the irony of the situation. They were both. Come on, mm. it's, did, let's be honest. It's just team orders. Yeah, and, they basically and, did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then they praised Lewis. He did give it back, which kind of it really doesn't make that <laughs> doesn't make that much sense when you look at the because. Uh, no, you know what? I thought like, about it, and like when it comes to the, the team, when, when the, it comes to the team, is the same amount of points, it's the same amount of money that they get. For the team, yeah. But for the team. When they want to win both championships, the gap's 14 instead of it would have been uh, 11. Yeah, but if you're thinking of, like, like, you know, if they had actually done that. They give Botas three. Well, you know, actually, he's only right behind. It's only a couple points. It's only a few points behind him. Yeah, it's only a couple points. He had 19 19 points. Botas is 19 points behind Hamilton. That's not a lot of points. Oh, fuck. Yeah, if he comes first or second and Hamilton doesn't finish a race, he's one point behind or ahead by his five or six there. Six. That's intense. That, w- that could w- get scary. I wouldn't want to, to see. Okay. I'm going to put, it out. I wanna put it out there. I wouldn't want to see about a what this world champion. <laughs> it's like seeing a... It would ruin his hometown. Yeah. <laughs> All his neighbors would be, be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> they oh, might, as well just, it, might as well just put their house on Airbnb now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make more money. You just move to a next small town. It's, uh, I mean, it's better than a Nico Rosberg win. Let's be honest. True. <laughs> True. Got, you guys remember Nico Rosberg? Oh, I remember? tried. I tried not to. <laughs> <laughs> remember him when he like shows up sometimes to races with a suit on. Wait, how, what's what's the runtime of the show right now? Just out of curiosity. Oh, that I don't know. This thing doesn't tell me unless we're. That's fine. That's fine. Let's not even worry about you it. You guys want to wrap it up? Yeah. No, I don't know. Wait, well, do, do we know? Do we got know? anything else? Halo suck. Halo suck. Apparently. That's according to Danny. Um, I have nothing more to say on the subject. <sighs> Wait, Alonso. Did we talk about? Okay, we talked about Alonso's fantastic performance already. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Kind of. We talked about. And his, his no, okay. meme becoming reality. Ricardo. No, but okay, so vers- th- true. But I want—I just want to say one more thing about Alonso, because you love him. Mark, you yeah. love him so much. I do. I do. <laughs> uh, but he, it's because he's fucking good, man. Like he's still like managing at the ancient age of thirty-six, according to F1 terms right now. He's still managing to strong arm a car into submission and get them the absolute best that you could have gotten out of that yeah. like there there was not a single other driver on the grid and i tell you this right now like you know not knowing anything at all but it, like 
I think that a lot of people would agree that not another driver on the grid would be able to do what Alonso did today. Mm. Like it, that to control the car in that way, to still like, you know, in the face of adversity in like having a car that just won't cooperate under power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, drive it home the way that he did and qualify the way he did and achieve the fastest lap. I'm not sure you guys can see that, but there's like a pirate There's a boat. pirate ship driving by. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And they're they're spraying everyone on the shore with water so with uh, water guns. <laughs> These guys while, actually have a wooden screaming a wooden boat that says pirate life on it. And they're uh, That's hilarious. Toronto. Good. What a time to, to be alive. spray the shore with water guns. Can can they see that? I guess not. No, no. Not oh, they're, they're turning away. They're turning away from shore. They're retreating. The enemy. <laughs> These pirates have been repelled. <laughs> All right, we're talking about pirates now. Clearly, the show is close to over. Okay, yeah. so Those Alfred Alonso. Pirates, there is the one thing that I wanted to Sailing say. So for Mar- 200 years. Martin Brundle said that the fact that he, he went pants. on that lawn chair on Twitter. So on Twitter, he said that the fact that he went on that lawn chair like somehow is a reminder of why none of the big teams want him yeah yeah look look it up look look up the martin brundle tweet my, my internet okay out. whatever whatever it is like it was it was from that same mm. like picture oh and the gust of wind forgot about that oh yeah Every, the gust ev- of wind. Ev- everybody knows about the gust of wind right yeah okay uh look it up wink wink hungarian grand prix gust of wind um <laughs> <laughs> he said that yeah he said that the, he kind of tried to like play it off like that attitude is like what is getting him like kind of blacklisted from all the teams. No, listen. No, it's not. No, it's not. That if anything, like being meme friendly is like one of the highest attributes With, any driver yeah. can have right now. <laughs> yeah, for Martin sure. He just doesn't the, get it. He's got his eyes on him all the time. Not his eyes. Well, our eyes. Everybody's eyes. Him. Everyone's eyes on him all yeah. the time. Yeah. It's, yeah, he's a funny guy. Yeah. He speaks like five languages, so it's not even just us. He speaks to Italian people, Spanish people, yeah. everyone that speaks English. It's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's able well, to do it's, that. It's, There's other th- well, drivers he, too that speak many right? that languages, like and they don't of, they don't bother with that. They don't do jokes. Well, he was the Verstappen of his age. Right. right? He was when he came to F1. He was <clears> the youngest driver that, or like like the, the youngest race winner, the youngest this, the youngest champion, the right. youngest, youngest, youngest. That was him when he came to the fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you want to wrap it up? Uh, yeah, what uh, what are you gonna like uh, play us out with? Like, are you know, uh, like, I'll uh, just do the original. I'll yeah, do the original. Sweet. The sun is retreating. The wind is picking up hardcore. All right, guys. We will see you uh, next. Soon. Uh, anyway, one eighteen. Yeah, we yep. will see. You. All right, guys. See you later.